Welcome to Joyful Gen Yoga. Today's practice is the last in our line of chakra gentle classes. So what we'll be talking about today is the crown chakra. And typically when we're trying to stimulate the crown, we think of ways to put pressure on the crown, which sometimes looks like headstand. Now we aren't going to be doing that today. So the other piece that when we're trying to connect the line of chakras, we're thinking about meditation, right? So today's practice is actually going to get our body prepared to sit in meditation for a few minutes at the end. So we'll be thinking about opening up through our hips a little bit, finding some strength in our postural muscles so that we can sit comfortably. All right, so we'll actually get started standing today. I do have blocks and a blanket as usual. If there's something else you use to sit, grab that, a bolster, a pillow, whatever makes you happy. So you can come to the top of your space. I'll stay here just so you can see me. We're going to start by rooting into our feet and just taking a moment to kind of spread our toes, rock back and forth just a little bit to really feel our body in space. And then let your palms face forward, draw your shoulder blades down your back. Let your eyes soften, close, coming to Tadasana. Start to notice your breath and feel the connection of your feet rooted to the earth. That long line of energy that lifts up your spine and comes all the way up out your crown. Feeling connected to the earth feeling connected to the sky above you, feeling your breath as a tool to help you make that connection. And on your next breath in, float your arms all the way up overhead and exhale, draw your hands down to heart. You could let your eyes flutter open. We'll do that twice more. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands to heart. Last time, inhale, feeling our body move with our breath. Hands to heart. Let's reach down with our left arm and sweep our right arm up overhead. Nice side body stretch. You can even keep your left fingertips attached to your thigh if you'd like for a little of support here and then inhale come on back up reaching that right arm down fingertips can touch your outer thigh if you'd like left arm reaches up and over inhale all the way back up hands to heart interlace your fingers press your palms forward around your upper back inhale sweep your arms up press up through the heels of your hands and then gently release. Interlace your fingers back behind you. We'll bend our knees quite a bit. Rest belly onto thighs. And then start to let your head hang as your arms draw up and overhead. You could give your head a little wiggle, a little shake, yes and no. Your legs can start to straighten any amounts. Take a breath in and out, soften the hands down toward the earth. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Your fingertips could be on the ground or your hands could be on your shins. And then exhale, fold back twice more. Inhale, lengthen, lift halfway. Exhale, fold it in. Last time, inhale, lift. And exhale, fold, bend into your knees. Your hands can be at your waist, press through your heels, stand tall. We'll take a moment here to wiggle our hips in one direction and wiggle our hips in the other direction. And our hips just kind of waking up, noticing. Pause, move in the other direction. Good. And then walk your feet a little closer in. Have blocks toward the top of your mat. As you inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And then touch your hands onto blocks. Step your left leg back behind you so it looks like a runner's lunge. Feel the energy through your hips, through your thighs. 
Keep your left hand on the earth or a block. Reach your right arm up. We'll twist. You could circle that right wrist out. And move in the opposite direction. Release the right hand down. Look forward. Step to the top of your space. Inhale, lengthen your spine once more. And then let your hands touch. Step the right foot back. Stay in that runner's lunge shape. And then keep the right hand down, left arm reaches. We could circle the left wrist around. Notice how your hips start to feel. And relax the left hand down, look forward. Spring yourself to the top of your space. Lengthen your spine and fold in. Bend those knees, press through your heels, stand all the way tall. Root into your right foot and take a step out with your left. So we're coming into a warrior two and we'll just pause for a moment, straightening the right leg and rebending. Straighten, rebend. Try to keep your shoulders directly over your hips. Just a few more, waking up that hip joint, waking up your inner thighs. And then pause with the right knee, right over the ankle if possible, arms float out to the side. Flip your right palm, reach up and back, find a reverse warrior shape. And then come back to center, right elbow, right thigh, left arm sweeps up and over, find that extended side angle. Inhale brings you back to warrior two. We'll straighten out the right leg here. And then if you can, find one of your blocks or maybe two. And we'll start to pivot and turn both sets of toes to face the long side of the mat. Now, this is going to be different for all of us. I know we've spent time before resting our third eye on a block. But could you create a stack with your blocks where the crown of your head rests? So it might be a little higher, a little lower than you're used to. Your hands can support you under your shoulders. And we're just trying to get a gentle stimulation on the crown of the head as we fold. Take another breath in. And out, soften into your knees, press into your heels. Inhale, stand tall, arms up overhead, hands come down to heart. We'll pivot the left toes out now, and with the hands on the hips, start to play kind of in that straightening and bending into that warrior two. Keep your breath moving in and out through your nose. We're just waking these hips up so that when we sit, it'll be a little bit more comfortable. And then bend into that left knee, arms float out in your warrior two. Feel your strength, feel your heels drawing in towards center. Left palm floats up and back, reverse warrior. Strong through your center, strong rooted connection to the earth. Inhale, floats you back up, warrior two. Exhale, left elbow, left thigh, right arm reaches up. We find ourselves in that side angle pose. Shoulder blades down our back. And then gently pull yourself back up to warrior two. Hands can come to hips if you'd like. Straighten that left leg, pivot and turn your toes. Adjust your feet so they're the proper width for you. As you start to hinge your hips, work your crown back down to the earth or to block for most of us, right? Whatever makes better sense in your body. You might notice you have to adjust from the first fold to the second. And we're not going for crazy depth here. We're just trying to open the backs of the legs. We're trying not to lock out our knees. And we're just finding a little sensation at the crown of the head. Now, one of the nicest things to do <laughs> to get a little stimulation through the crown chakra, other than doing headstands, which I'm not telling you to do right now, um, <laughs> is to spend some time getting a head massage. It can really help to 
um, relax and it's amazing how connected we are, which we know, right? That's why we practice our asana. But um, as you get a head massage, you might even feel like your jaw relax, your neck relax, because of the fascia that connects us, right? From different parts of our body. Relaxing here, even getting a little pressure here can help. And then gently bend into your knees. We can take hands to our hips and press all the way up tall. We'll walk our feet back in a little bit about hips width distance. And again, a little shimmy side to side or circle if that feels good. And then pause. We'll bend our knees. Walk your feet wide enough that it's comfortable to sit down into a malasana or yoga squat shape. And go ahead and sit right on a block here. We'll reach our left arm out. I'm not mirroring you because I wasn't before, so I don't want to confuse you. Left arm out to the side, right arm reaches up and we'll open side body. Again, shoulder blades are down our back, helping to wake up our postural muscles. And hands to heart, right arm reaches in front of right leg, left arm stretches, shoulder blades continue to squeeze down our back, and hands to heart. However gracefully or not you arrive, we'll come to all fours. So you can bring your hands forward, lower your shins down to the ground, and you can slide your blocks off to the side for now. When you arrive in all fours, we'll pull our heart forward and then exhale round. Two more cat cows here. Inhale, heart pulls forward, tail lifts. Exhale round. Last time, inhale, draw your heart forward. Exhale round. Come to neutral and crawl your fingertips forward, melt your heart down to the ground. Your forehead could rest on the earth or a block. Coming into a puppy pose, starting to stretch those shoulders. Letting your elbows draw down to the ground, stepping back with one foot and then the other. Arrive in your sphinx pose, drawing shoulder blades again down your back. Take another breath in and out. Listen carefully. We'll extend our arms out in front of us. You can take a cheek to the mat or find your forehead resting on your hands. Take a pause. Notice the spaces in your body that might feel a little warm, hopefully. And then we'll start to roll. I always call this like a little rotisserie yogi. We'll roll onto our back body. Again, it does not have to be graceful and probably was not. We'll bend into our knees, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, and we'll hug our knees into our chest, coming into that figure four stretch. This is one of my favorite shapes to prepare for a seated meditation. So it really helps to open the glute, hamstring, piriformis area. So she can really pull down on that low back when we start to find our seat if it feels really tight. And then release the left foot. Send the right leg up to the sky, give it a shake. Right foot lands, left ankle over the right thigh, and we'll hug it in on the other side. your steady breath moving in and out through your nose and then gently release that right foot down shake out your left leg and then walk your feet both as wide as the mat and let your knees start to knock side to side your arms can be out in a T or in cactus just rest your arms at your side so we're just releasing through those hips a few times
and then bring yourself to center. Hug your knees into your chest. Roll to your favorite side and we'll walk ourselves up to a seat. Now start to gather any of your props to find yourself in your seated meditation. You can kneel, you can sit cross-legged. If lotus is in your practice, go for it. Allow your body to set up in a way that you can maintain your posture. If you're near a wall, Sit back, lean your back against the wall. Let yourself be tall here. Let your body not be the thing that pulls you out, okay? So let yourself settle in. Let your eyes soften close. Root down through your sits bones. Let your elbows hang heavy from your shoulders. You might even shrug your shoulders a few times to make sure that they are indeed relaxed. Let your breath deepen. Breath moves steadily in and out through the nose. Start to feel the body that you are arriving with today. What do you notice? Are there some habitual aches and pains? Is there something that feels tight? or something that feels open. How does your breath feel in your body? Does it feel easy to take big breaths in and big breaths out? Can you commit to breathing in and out through your nose? Does it feel possible to Stack your bones one on top of the other so shoulders are directly over the hips and ears are pulled back over the shoulders. Can you feel your vertebrae line up to help create that line of energy from your root all the way up through the crown? Visualizing the rainbow of light of our chakras, red at the root, orange at the sacrum, golden yellow at the navel, green at the heart, turquoise at the throat, indigo at the third eye, and a violet white light up through the crown of your head. And imagine that light to extend beyond you, to connect to the world around you. The universality, the oneness, that deep connection we feel to something beyond our small little selves. Every inhale, imagine that you're igniting the light within you. Every exhale, imagine that you're shining that light out to those around you. Filling yourself up and then sending it out. Connecting to a sense of oneness from our rooted, grounded connection to the earth as we travel up the many layers of who we are creative, strong, loving, truthful, intuitive, connected being. Every breath in fills that sense within us. Every breath out, we send out that light into the world around us.
checking in with your posture. Continuing to fill up with every breath in. Shine out with every exhale. Don't change the world by changing other people. We change the world by changing ourselves, by evolving, becoming better every day, thereby giving others around us permission to do the same. We know that sharing the light of a candle, lighting another candle, it doesn't dim your own candle. It just gives permission for another candle to shine. And then that candle can light the next and the next after that. We move away from fear. We move away from that sense of disconnection. To a feeling of oneness, to seeing others in ourselves, and ourselves in others, to deepen our ability to love, to have compassion. Three more breaths here. Connected from root to crown. And on your next breath, Reach your arms all the way up overhead. Draw that energy down to your heart space, hands and Anjali Mudra. Feeling your fingertips press one another. Feeling again that connection that roots you to the earth and grows your crown up to the sky. Feel free to join me in the sound of OM, this universal sound that connects us. Full breath in. OM. Bowing forehead to fingertips in deep gratitude. I wish you all abundant joy. Be well.